So let's say we wanted to check amperage on a circuit for some reason. Um, this isn't a test that we typically do, but basically when we are testing amperage, we are checking to see how much electrical flow or electrons are flowing through the circuit. Um, so one way that we could do that pretty easily is by taking out the fuse. Now when we take out the fuse, we have now just disconnected the circuit, the same as if we had a blown fuse. Now of course for electrons to flow through a circuit, they need to have the circuit completed. And so we're going to complete the circuit with our meter. And so electricity will have to flow through the circuit, through the meter, and out the other side to the load, which in this case is going to be our headlight here. Um, and the meter will measure how much is actually flowing. Now the issue with this is that you want to make sure your meter settings are correct and that you are plugged into the correct ports. So on all of our other tests, all we've had to do is connect our um, meter leads to our COM and volt ohm diode check jack. But in this case, we have two separate jacks to choose from. We have the amp and we have the milliamp slash um, microamps, which is not something that we really ever, ever, ever want to use, okay? Especially when you're just starting out. So we're gonna start with just amps. That way, if there's too many amps flowing through the circuit, then we will be more or less safe. And what I mean by that is that this amp jack can handle up to 10 amps, which is fairly high for most circuits. Okay. Now typically if you have a problem, let's say a fuse is blowing repeatedly and you want to see how much amperage is flowing through there, you really don't want to use this method because what's going to happen is that more than likely your circuit is pulling or more than 10 amps is flowing through that circuit causing the fuse to blow. So if more than 10 amps is flowing through the circuit, therefore more than 10 amps is going to flow through your meter and therefore your meter fuse is going to blow. So this is one reason why a lot of people will attach a inline fuse in their meter leads to hopefully protect their meter fuse from blowing. Now the meter fuse is about $25, maybe more, um, and a regular 7.5 amp fuse like this one um, is maybe like two bucks. So this is a, a much better option. Now this is not foolproof, okay, but it can help. Um, one of the downsides to doing this, because otherwise it is a very good idea, one of the downsides to doing this is that your meter lead ratings or how much they can handle has now been compromised. Um, but for the most part this works pretty well and if you're just starting out in the field, just go ahead and do this. <laughs> it'll, it'll help you more than it will hurt you for sure. Okay, so let's get started, all right? So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we move our meter lead over to the amp jack. Now I'll show you what happens if we don't do that. Okay. So we're on amps, okay. or let's say, okay. plug it to the amp jack, let's say we try to measure volts. The meter is going to beep at you if you're in the amp jack and you're trying to measure volts because that will blow up your meter. Don't do that. So make sure that you are setting the dial in the correct setting and that your jacks are placed in the correct place on the meter. In this case, amps and comp. So all we need to do to measure amps is first we're going to turn the circuit on because of course if the circuit's not on then amperage is not going to flow and you will not get any reading whatsoever. Okay, so um, we just turned the headlights on and now as you can see this headlight is not on yet okay? but once I attach my meter leads to it to the fuse okay which is right over here okay which I've just removed then electricity will start to flow Now you don't want to just take your blunt meter probes and start jabbing them into these terminals because what's going to happen is that nice terminal that was just the perfect thickness for that fuse blade to slip through is now going to be wider and now the contact for the blade fuse 
is, uh, well, the blades on the fuse is not going to be so good and electricity won't flow very well. So we have these nice little meter Tesla kits. Okay, so any kind of connector that you may want to check, you can use these in place of your meter leads so that you don't destroy anything. Because okay? our objective is to fix, not to destroy. Okay. So these are the two that are going to fit best. Not too wide, but not uh, too thin either. We just insert one probe on one side of the fuse terminal, which is in the battery junction box. Uh, battery junction boxes are located under the hood in the engine compartment. Okay, so one lead on one side, one on the other. And then we can go ahead and uh, test with our regular meter leads on the ends. Um, now, the downside to using T-pins instead of these um, meter test leads or uh, terminal test leads is that when we put these in side by side, since those T-pins are bare, they sometimes can touch together and that will give us a false reading. So I'm gonna put my test lead in one side and my other test lead in on the other side. Okay, And then the headlight comes on and we get an amperage reading. When I disconnect, the headlight comes goes off and we don't have an amperage reading. So we are connecting the circuit with our meter. Okay. So hooking up the meter directly to the circuit to measure amperage is really not the safest way for your meter to measure amperage. So another alternative, alternative that we have that's a whole lot faster and easier and we don't have to disconnect anything is just to use a current clamp or amp clamp. Um, this is a low amp current probe or current clamp. And the nice thing about this is that it can measure very small amounts of current. Now, when we hooked our meter up directly to the fuse, we got around four amps. So let's see what we get with our amp clamp and see how accurate it is. Okay. Now, one common mistake that people will make is that they want to hook this up just like as if they're measuring amps, but that is not what this current probe does. This does not go in line with the circuit. This measures amperage in a different way. So how this measures amperage is that whenever a wire is through the center of this clamp, okay, whenever it is flowing electrons from one side to the other, anytime you have electricity flowing, you automatically have a proportionate amount of magnetism. So all this does is measure the magnetism. So if you have more electrons flowing through, you have more magnetism, and that's gonna pick that up. Now magnetism doesn't really have electrons flowing, it's just pressure. So in electrical terms, pressure is the same thing as voltage. So this current probe is going to measure the amount of pressure and it, then we have to translate it into amperage. Okay. So pressure is voltage, so we hook this up just like we would to measure voltage. Turn this dial to DC volts. Again, we always use DC. And then turn our low amp probe to one millivolt equals 10 milliamp. Okay. So that just means that this decimal point should move over one whenever we're actually measuring it. Hit our zero button and then we're sure that we are starting at a baseline of zero so that any number that comes up here is the actual reading. Since amperage flows from the battery to the load and back through ground again, we can choose a ground wire to measure amperage on just like we could choose a power supply wire to measure amperage on. The thing that you really want to be sure of is that those jaws are closed tightly. Now we measured about four amps with our inductive pickup as compared to four amps with our meter measuring directly with the headlights on. 
Let's say we want to measure the current output on a high amperage device, such as this alternator. Now, a lot of alternators can put out upwards of 120 amps, sometimes even more. And 120 amps is absolutely more amperage than this 10 amp fused meter. So we do not want to use the ammeter function in our DMM because that 10 amp fuse will blow. And again, that's you know very expensive. And also, you might think, okay, well let's use our current probe. Our low amp current probe only goes up to, it says input 60 amp max. So our alternator will most likely put out more than that, or it can. So the low amp probe is not a good option either. Okay, so we're just gonna leave that in the box. Now there is a high current clamp, and this goes up to, it says 600 volts. It's quite a bit, okay? And it's very easy to use this. You use this the same way as you use the low amp clamp. So all you have to do is take the plug, and remember, black lead goes to common, red lead goes to the volts, ohms, and diode section. So you just plug that in. Okay. Now what we do is we're going to turn it again to volts, not amps, volts. Okay. Same procedure here as well. We're going to turn the clamp on. And to zero this, you actually turn this little dial here. You have to turn it until it's perfectly adjusted to zero. Okay, now we're ready to measure our current. Okay. Also, this is directional. So there is a little arrow here, and this arrow is pointing upwards. So that means that we want the current flow to go in the direction of conventional current, which means from this side flowing through out the other side. So the alternator recharges the battery. So current is going to go from the bat from the alternator to the battery. So we want to make sure that this arrow is pointing in that direction. So we're just going to hook this completely around the alternator cable. Okay, and then we'll start our vehicle. You can see here that we have 47 millivolts. Now to convert this to amps, we just cover up the decimal and we have 47 amps. Now if you find that your reading is in the negative, then that's simply just because you have your clamp reversed. So just simply put your clamp back on in the correct direction Make sure that your cord is not going to be touching any of the accessory belts, and you're good to go.